So you're relatively new to Destiny, or you took some time away from the game. You land in the tower and you're like, wait, is that a hole? You go over to the vault to get out some old stuff or to store some weapons for a later date and you see, there's a new vending machine? Ooh, can I get a Pepsi? No, wait a minute. It sells exotics? Wait, these exotics are expensive and there's a ton of them. And how do you see this name and this one? What do I even buy? What's a spoil? Today, I go over five essential weapons from the monument to lost lights for PVE. Now, given the sheer number and variety of exotics, as well as an ever evolving meta, I fully expect all of you to share your opinions in the comments down below. Also understand that this video is being made during season of the lost, and this list is directly impacted by our current meta. That said, the intention of the video is to hopefully give you some targets to grind for to use right now. Now, each exotic, depending on their original drop source, will have varying costs as well as varying material types required to buy them all will require an exotic cipher this is available from your season pass as well as completing a weekly quest from Zer. from there each exotic will vary in glimmer cost vary in planetary materials and vary in the amount of golf balls sorry they're requiring me to say ascendant shards tldr the good shit costs money and the uh ford pinto exotics cost less so first up we have a sleeper wait Hey, is this script right? This gun is called Sleeper, like Resident Sleeper. Oh, Sleeper Simulant. Got it, got it, okay. Resident Sleeper Simulant, as most people probably felt about this heavy linear fusion rifle before Season of the Lost, has surged through the ranks of burst DPS heavy weapons this season due to particle deconstruction being one of the craziest mods ever available in Destiny 2. This high damage dealing linear fusion excels in its DPS due to its exotic perk, German word. Wait, supposedly I'm German, so let me try this. Dorn Russian. <laughs> you serious? Google, how'd I do? Dorn Russian. Yikes. Okay, my ancestors are shaking their heads. Anyway, German perk guy states the weapon's laser over penetrates Giggity. enemies and refracts off hard Giggity. surfaces. So in summary, when you shoot sleeper, the beam goes through the enemy and can cause collateral type shots. Side effects also include in-game raves and laser light shows. <laughs> Though you won't specifically use it for going for the collateral shots on ads, this is a huge damage dealing monster. Its exotic catalyst adds an increase to ammo reserves as well as speeds up the weapon's charge time, which is a big bonus when going for big burst damage. Now, why isn't this weapon further up on the list? Simple, it's actually out damaged by several legendary linear fusions, such as the Threaded Needle and Reed's Regret. If you don't have a god roll of either of those weapons and want a reliable high damage heavy option for this season until you are able Able to farm the other two sleeper should not be slept on pairing this weapon up with particle deconstruction is a no-brainer and that is definitely where you'll see some eye-popping damage numbers from the monument to lost lights sleeper simulant costs one exotic cypher 125,000 glimmer 200 baryon bow and one ascendant shard overall not too expensive but we have other options onward all right number four wait hold on we got some super sus stuff going on here wait is that an aimbot jesus this clown has walls too yeah, dude, chill. It's a perk, not a souped up gaming chair. Tiku's Divination, AKA someone at Bungie accidentally sat on the U key for a little too long, is an exotic solar bow that was the season pass weapon from Season of the Chosen. What is basically the solar version of Trinity Ghoul, Tiku's is one of the best and most unique exotic bows to enter Destiny 2 in recent seasons. With this season's overload options being limited to just swords and bows, Tiku's and its exotic bow counterparts have surged through the PVE meta and have become fantastic crowd control options that many guardians have slept on in recent seasons. Tiku's lethality really comes from its exotic perk, Sacred Flame, which states hip firing this weapon fires multiple tracking projectiles. Targets marked by these projectiles explode upon death or when struck by another Sacred Flame's explosion. How good is the tracking? Watch. I would honestly rate that at an eight gaming chairs out of 10. Basically, you turn ads into mini nukes that when they die from literally anything, including other members of your fire team, they explode with a decent blast radius. And you can really maximize its lethality with Tiku's other perk, 
Causality arrows. Arrows fired while aiming down sights cause sacred flames to instantly detonate. Precision hits with perfectly drawn arrows increase the power of this detonation. Tiku's catalyst adds that perfectly drawn arrows that detonate sacred flames increase arrow damage. Striking targets unaffected by sacred flame instead refreshes causality arrows duration. So effectively, the catalyst takes this already nutty bow and cranks it up to 11 in the damage factor. I know what you're thinking, bro. It's a bow. I'm going to kill these little shitter ads, get a champ or a yellow bar and switch to my special weapon. Well, maybe don't. The amount of damage this bow does is actually kind of nasty. Pair that with the fact that the explosion from Sacred Flame can stun overload champions and this thing becomes a versatile tool of destruction, which can also be a great name for your new metal band. From the Monument to Lost Lights, Tiku's Divination will cost you one Exotic Cypher, 100,000 Glimmer, 150 Microfacic Data Lettuce, I know what I said, and an Ascendant Shard. Overall, pretty cheap for the utility this bow provides, but there are still more options, including another bow. Next up at number three, which by the way, the ranking doesn't mean it's bad. It's just lower on your priorities. Chill out comment section. I'm sorry, that was aggressive. I still love you. Number three is the Frenchiest of all bows in Destiny 2 and one that enjoys a fine glass of Bordeaux while shredding through waves of thrall, Le Monarch. This exotic bow originally introduced in season five has been an actual terror in PVP. Like literally most people have been hit by Le Monarch and gone. <laughs> So what, this bow makes PVPers crazy and wait, this is a PVE video, right? It's exotic perk poison arrows states, arrows fired quickly after a full draw become poison arrows. Precision hits with poison arrows spread poison to nearby enemies. That poison damage continues to tick for a time after the initial shot, similar to Thorn, making this bow unbelievable for stun locking overload champions. And yes, hitting another ad next to an overload champ and poisoning the champion with splash damage does stun them. Beside that aspect of its utility, it hits like an absolute truck, dealing an insane amount of precision damage. In testing, I found Lone Arc to be a crazy tool for dealing with champions. However, I did find it to be a little disappointing for crowd control after testing Tiku's. However, where this bow excels is in its damage and its ability to freeze champions in their spot without using stasis. From the Amazon.com of Lost Lights, Bezos will get you your toxic bow in two days for one exotic cipher, 120 25,000 glimmer, 200 dusklight shards, and one ascendant shard. If he doesn't get the bow to you in two days, chat their support and they might give you like a bad juju or something for free. I don't know. Number two is a hand cannon with an identity crisis. Ariana's vow is somehow a hand cannon that kicks harder than a horse that just got snuck up on. This exotic 90 RPM hand cannon is probably one of the most utilized hand cannons in all of PVE since its introduction in season eight due to its combination of perks. It's first, death at first glance, which states bonus damage when aiming down sights on the opening shot of an attack. This bonus is preserved if the shot deals precision damage or strikes an elemental shield. After testing, it does actually turn out that it can be any elemental shield and first glance will stay active. Now, I feel like the description of Ariana's next perk is kind of more of a meme than anything, but it does have a key piece that makes this a full-blown Swiss army knife. Looks can kill states this weapon fires special shield piercing ammunition. It comes with a scope. Thank you for the clarification, Bungie. So besides the meme of this hand cannon having a scope, it intrinsically has anti-barrier rounds. That is huge huge. So if you want to run a different mod on your gauntlets, or if your build allows have anti-barrier overload and unstoppable available all at the same time, Ariana's allows for it. Combine all of that utility with the fact that this thing's damage is bonkers and you have one of the most versatile and utilized hand cannon in all of PVE. In fact, most guardians that I know going into specifically lost sectors look to Ariana's as a top option. So you're already thinking, yo, this hand cannon's nasty. I need it. I have haven't even mentioned its catalyst. You're like, wait, this thing can't possibly get better. No shot. Well, I'm here to tell you it can and it does. Ariana's catalyst adds an increased magazine size from six to nine rounds. And yes, adds auto loading holster. So yes, you can now shoot more bullets, put it away. And after four to five seconds, have it fully reloaded and ready to go. I guarantee you will love Ariana's without the catalyst, then laugh at how ridiculous it is with. Ariana's is available from the monument for one exotic cipher, 100,000 glimmer, 150 helium filaments, and one ascendant shard. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. That's literally nothing for this thing. Like that's a steal. Before we move on, I'll add that I made 
create a PVP build with Ariana's that allows you to one tap inside of the Crucible. Check it out with the link in the top right and down in the description. Now, finally, we have a grenade launcher that has somehow gotten better over the years. The original quest to unlock the catalyst was high themed and to be honest, getting this exotic out of the monument to Lost Lights for as shockingly cheap as it is, feels like you just stole this thing. Wither Horde is an exotic kinetic grenade launcher that is arguably the best season pass weapon ever released. A go-to staple for both DPS and crowd control. This has taken the space that Anarchy left when it was so brutally and savagely nerfed at the beginning of the season of the Lost and I haven't gotten over it yet. Look at a mess with my boy. Wither Horde is honestly one of the most creative and unique weapons as it is one of the most powerful and different weapons and has stood the test of time, maintaining its status as an essential exotic. So why is it the monster that it is? Well, it's intrinsic perk Primeval's Torment states projectiles fired by this weapon blight the target or nearby area on impact. Okay, it's a toxic ball cannon, so what? It's other perk Break the Bank is where Wither Horde takes shape. Blighted targets take damage over time and blight the nearby area on death. So if you direct directly impact a target with Wither Horde, you get an active damage tick until the Blight wears out or the target dies. If the target dies, the Blight drops to the ground and deals damage to anything standing in it. As you can see here, blighting a target and blighting the ground at the same time does result in two damage ticks occurring. Now, what made Anarchy the best? Not one of the best, but the best exotic in the game for PvE. It's passive tick damage and its ammo economy. After Bungie savagely nerfed both Guardians have turned to Wither Horde as a suitable replacement. Tick damage allows you to switch to another weapon after blighting a target and begin dealing damage with your primary or heavy weapon. Wither Horde doesn't stop there. Its exotic catalyst arguably makes it better than Anarchy was. Not in terms of damage, but in utility. Its catalyst maxes, yes, maxes the handling and adds auto loading holster. So it literally is the perfect exotic in PVE for crowd control and passive DPS. Shoot a target, blight it, stow it, deal damage with a linear fusion rifle, or other heavy weapon and by the time you're out of ammo Wither Horde's ready to go again for crowd control blight the ground switch to a primary clean up other ads and in four to five seconds Wither Horde is ready again one thing to note is if we ever get the seasonal mod breach and clear back again in the future Wither Horde will actually be in my opinion the best exotic weapon for PvE overnight I'm gonna say this for all Guardians watching this this weapon is a must-have period if you are new or coming back to the game or if you have friends Friends that don't have Wither Horde, this is what you grind for next, period. Best part, it is cheap. One exotic cipher, 100,000 glimmer, 150 glacial star wart, and just one golf ball is honestly too good to be true, but that's all it will set you back for acquiring Wither Horde. So that is five must have exotics from the Monument to Lost Lights for PVE. The PVP guide is coming soon. Now, some honorable mentions that didn't make the top five include Lumina for uh, my Healy Boy out there but due to its limited utility and damage didn't quite make it izanagi's burden which needs the catalyst level before it really becomes a monster whisper of the worm because bungie hates this gun and it should be a special weapon bastion because pvp and it will most likely be on the pvp guide as well outbreak because trinity ghoul and gone too soon pour one out anarchy if you think another exotic should have been on this list let me know in the comments down below hit that like button so other new guardians will see this list and get to farming if you enjoyed this video and want to see future videos including the pvp guide to this monument hit that sub button and trigger the bell to get notified when the next video is up and when i go live here on youtube doing trials helps and pve helps join my discord with the link down in the description to connect with me and other guardians and until next time i have been teagues you have been beautiful peace